HelloFresh takes the guesswork and the extra hassle out of planning and preparing delicious meals for dinner. America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh gives you over 40 recipes to choose from each week. And then your farm fresh pre-portioned seasonal ingredients arrive at your doorstep with simple instructions to help you feel like the master chef of your kitchen. And did you know that HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout? HelloFresh has been an awesome addition to our household's dinner routine. We all get involved and cook together following the pictured step-by-step instructions. It's a fun quality time and the meals are delicious. Give it a try and see for yourself. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 having it all and use code 50 having it all for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, to get 50% off plus free shipping, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 having it all and use code 50 having it all. Everybody loves a sequel, especially when it comes to the world's most comfortable shoe. Introducing the Allbirds Wool Runner 2, a next level revamp of the cult classic. Seven years in the making, it's been completely reimagined for a game changing fit and feel. With enhanced cushioning and super soft materials, the Wool Runner 2 delivers comfy all day wear built for bliss. Visit Allbirds.com and use code FRESH24 to score a free pair of socks with purchase. That's A L L B I R D S.com, code FRESH24. Welcome to the Having It All podcast the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? Matthew Bivens here, and welcome to another episode of the Having It All podcast. Okay, I have to admit that I have been a little anxious, I'd say, about recording this episode um, I've fidgeted for the past 15, 20 minutes or so, testing my equipment and double checking this, double checking that. And it's because this is a very, uh, very important episode for me. This is episode 100 of the podcast. I, I, I'm sort of speechless. I, I really can't believe that it's already been 100 freaking episodes of this thing. Man, I started this show back in, I want to say, March of last year, 2016. And it's been about a year and a half of recording. And I mean, this has felt like so much longer because I've, I've become so invested in it and just have put so much time and energy and and heart into this thing. And it's just been an in- incredibly amazing ride. And in this episode today, I want to to share some of the biggest, most significant lessons that I've learned from recording 100 episodes of this show. And so there are four things, four things that I want to touch on. And it's it was very hard, honestly, to kind of narrow this thing down. I think I could have done an episode like, you know, 100 things I learned from 100 episodes. But I really just wanted to look at those things that truly impacted my life over the past year and a half and look at the feedback I've received from others, from from those of you who listen, and just distill all of that into a, a, a powerful episode. So that's what I'm going to be getting into today, the four things that, um, the four lessons that I have learned or just been reminded of through recording this show 100 times. And what what's so cool about hitting the 100 episode mark for me is that this was the goal, the one and only goal that I set for myself when I started the Having It All podcast. I wanted to create as little structure to this to this project as I possibly could. And so I said to myself, my one goal is to reach 100 episodes, to publish 100 episodes of this podcast. So to be standing here, and I'm literally standing right now, I wanted to record this episode standing up, to be standing here saying, I hit that goal is just so freaking big. I mean, I've talked about goal setting and and things like that on this show. So 
to hit that goal, man, I'm I'm beaming. I'm feeling like a million bucks. And it's because of you listening that I got here. You know, it's because you downloaded episodes, you subscribed, you you left reviews, you emailed me. You know, we met up live in person. I've I've created friends with 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 those who not only listen but then who've been on the show like we've become friends and we've created these relationships it's because of all that that I made it to 100 so I just want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you there'll be some more thank yous at the end of this thing uh, but I wanted to give that that thank you out there from the top all right let's jump into this list of the four biggest takeaways from recording 100 episodes because they're, they're great ones. They're great ones. And they really have empowered and transformed my life. So the first one is about health. It's about health. I talk about health in this show in a lot of different ways. And what I learned from all of these episodes, talking to different people, talking to folks who are, are doctors and healers and going through experiences on my own that I then brought to the show and shared with you all, the secret to health is in the word health itself. And that's heal. H-E-A-L. Now, health, whether we're talking about physical health, mental, spiritual, emotional, financial, all of that stuff comes down to how quickly we can heal. That's how we reach that state of optimum health. And for me, what I've seen and experienced is that being able to objectively view my health across all those areas, to be able to determine whether or not I'm in a state of intox or detox, right? Like, am I or have I been intoxing my body, let's just say physically, more than I have been detoxing my body. When I can can I take a step back and I can look at those things objectively and say yes or no, then I'm able to say, okay, I am on a healing path or I'm off a healing path. Just being able to see that and recognize that and understand that then gives me the ability to make a choice, make a healing choice. And you know, for, for that to sink in, that idea that health is about how quickly we can heal was big for me, especially when it came to my emotional health and my spiritual health. Because I have you know, been presented with the idea or the question of what does it mean to be emotionally healthy? And I think that you know, I, I never put too much thought into it. I thought to myself, well, if I don't get angry a whole lot, if I don't have irrational anger or extreme sadness or, you know, extreme jealousy all the time, because, you know, maybe I'll get a little jealous, but if I'm not in a perpetual state of jealousy, then I'm in a great space of health with my emotions. You know, my emotions are pretty healthy. However, nowhere in my previous concept of health was the idea of healing Because what I was doing in so many different areas, but again, we'll just focus on emotional, what I was doing was carrying those things with me, carrying those emotional ailments, or I like to call them diseases, pretending that I was in this healthy place, but truly experiencing and manifesting all sorts of things in my life because I hadn't healed some of those things from my past. And so the idea of, of healing and health, you know, was passed on to me by my coach and mentor, De Adioba. You know, he's the one who really illuminated the heal within the word health, that root of heal. And from that moment, it gave me a whole different way of looking at my health. And it gave me a whole different way of approaching and assessing whether or not I was physically healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally, financially, spiritually. And it just opened a whole lot up for me. It, it allowed me to remove some of the denial, to get just down to facts, and then to do something about it. And that was huge for me. 
you know? And in a show that's about experiencing abundance and love across all areas of life, because that's what the ALL stands for and having it all, abundant, loving life. And if you break down life, you got faith, family, friends, fitness, finance, and fun. You can talk about your health in all six of those Fs. You can ask yourself, am I healing or not? Am I intoxing or detoxing in all of those areas? It just opens up a whole new conceptualization, a whole new paradigm around what it means to truly be healthy. And that was a huge, huge lesson that I learned and was able to practice during these 100 episodes. Boom. That's the first lesson. The second thing that I learned, and a lot of this comes from the interviews, talking to people and hearing people's stories. It has to do with success. It has to do with success. And it's probably not an idea that is very foreign to you. You've probably heard this idea. But it's the concept that success in life is all about how you experience your journey. It is not about what you ultimately obtained in life. Success is about who you became in the process. HelloFresh takes the guesswork and the extra hassle out of planning and preparing delicious meals for dinner. America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh gives you over 40 recipes to choose from each week. And then your farm fresh pre-portioned seasonal ingredients arrive at your doorstep with simple instructions to help you feel like the master chef of your kitchen. And did you know that HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout? HelloFresh has been an awesome addition to our household's dinner routine. We all get involved and cook together following the pictured step-by-step instructions. It's a fun quality time and the meals are delicious. Give it a try and see for yourself. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 having it all and use code 50 having it all for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, to get 50% off plus free shipping, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 having it all and use code 50 having it all. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Now, I know all of us can... can Go back in our memories and think about a news article where we heard the story of a person who seemed to have it all, right? They had the the, all the 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 common signs of success. They had the multiple degrees, they had the titles in front of their name, they had the the bank account that was longer than a phone number, they had, you know, the ability to to travel to islands and and rent villas and drive cars and sports cars and you know they had successful businesses and that was one of the things that I always looked at are they a successful entrepreneur how much money do they make when they sleep all of that stuff we can all think of people who check off those boxes but then who could not stand who they became in the process the folks who you're like you have all this stuff but you're depressed You've accomplished all of this in your life, but you're angry. Look at what you've achieved, but you feel empty. If we think of success about how we experience our journey and who we become in the process, then it makes sense why that happens. That was an enormous lesson and reminder for me. Because for me personally, it is freaking hard to not compare myself to others. It is so hard. Mm, It is hard. I'll say that again because that's been a huge challenge and continues to be a big challenge for me. You know, comparing myself to others, envying other people's quote-unquote success. And it's something that I continue to work on. But here's the thing I gotta always, always remind myself, right? 
we people, we're like icebergs. And what I see in another person is just the very, very tip. It's like the very, like the corner of the tip. That's, that's all that I see. Because there is a huge behemoth of, of an experience underneath. I have no idea what that person went through to achieve that. I have no idea what that person says to themselves at night when they're, in, when they're alone in their secrecy looking in the mirror. I have no idea the extent to which they love or dislike themselves. I have no idea about their health, about whether they're healing or intoxing. You'd ha- you don't know any of that stuff. And even, if, even if, it, if the person is sitting next to you, even if it's your spouse, your best friend, your child, you still can't 100% get inside their mind to truly understand the extent of that iceberg beneath the surface. We just don't know. We don't know. And, and when I remind myself of that, when I remind myself that I really don't know what it's like to walk in that person's shoes, I don't know what they went through to create the experience they're having, and I really have no idea about how they've experienced their journey in life. I have no idea of, of who they have become in the process. And then I can just remind myself that success, it's not what we're taught. I like to, to talk about success in terms of success with a big S, capital S success, and then success with a small S, lowercase s. That big S, that's about who you become in the process. This big S success is about how you are experiencing life, how you are experiencing what you create. That small S, that's all the stuff you create. That's the that's the career. That's the bank account. That's the ability to go on vacation whenever you want. That's all that stuff. So just understand you can be so happy and fulfilled, and joyful, and peaceful, and appreciative with who you are, and what you are, and what you have. And the more that we look externally, the more that we get caught up in in success being out there, as opposed to success, and peace, and love, and happiness being internal, we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment, we're setting ourselves up for, for frustration, for judgment. So that has been a truly profound and magical lesson that I've learned in my life because, again, I am one of those people who has a, a, a or has had, I'm working on it, right, that chronic comparison to others, complex, whatever you want to call it. So I just always am trying to remind myself when I'm, you know, when I'm, uh, I'm setting goals for myself or I'm, I'm envisioning what I want to create and I'm getting very clear and I'm putting my head down and I'm grinding and I'm grinding and then I look up and I take a look around and I see other people at different areas. Maybe they're in places that I want to get to instead of turning and envying those folks. Let's look for inspiration, right? And let's focus on who we are truly becoming. Am I becoming a greater version of myself as I strive to accomplish my goals? That should be the question you ask. And that's really the lesson around success that I've learned in doing 100 episodes of this show. All right, so we got healing with health, and we've got success. Those are the first two big, big takeaways from this show. Two more to go. The next one has to do with relationships. Oh, man. I think the second half of this podcast, like episode 50 and on, I really started getting into talking about relationships more and got into talking about things that were happening with relationships in my life. And one of the most humbling, I'll, I'll bold and underline that, one of the most humbling and challenging concepts for me to truly grasp and appreciate and internalize is that our relationships are our mirrors. 
Our relationships are our mirrors. And that means that our spouses, our kids, our friends, our partners, our family members, our siblings, they all reflect different aspects of ourselves. You know, they show us what we believe about ourselves and about our worth and about the world around us. And this concept has been very, very hard for me to understand, very hard for me to grasp until I really was able to take a step back from from some of the relationships that, that I've had where just thinking about the person really just fires me up in not a great way. You know, it creates nerves, it creates anxiety, it creates frustration. When I was able to take a step back and just look at that, and, I, and I'm a person that likes analogies. Like, I can really wrap my mind around analogies. And so I thought, you know, you, you, we've heard the phrase, push your buttons, right? That person can really push your buttons. And I thought to myself, you know what? The only reason this person can push my buttons is because I have a button for that thing in me in the first place. They're simply showing me what's currently within me, and that's what's frustrating me. That's what gets me so anxious because I'm experiencing myself. I'm experiencing an aspect of myself in that person, and it's something to do with that aspect of myself that I'm fearing or I'm judging, and that creates all of that angst. They're simply showing me how I'm showing up. And when I was able to to take a step back, think of it in terms of the buttons, pushing on the buttons, and I thought, man, if I just didn't have that button there, they couldn't push it. If I shifted how I felt or thought about myself, if I did a little bit of self-work, that person wouldn't show up that way. Once I healed, let's get back to that that healing and health. I bet you that's going to come up throughout the rest of this episode. But when I do that work and I heal that part of me, well, then this person in front of me, they either leave my life because they're no longer needed or they start reflecting something different back to me because I've shifted. That, ladies and gentlemen, has been so humbling for me. Because humbling because it's been so hard. It's been so challenging. You know, because the relationship that does that, that push my buttons the most, the one that just creates so much anxiety within me, so much just angst, time, frustration, and confusion is a relationship with my own sister. You know, and there's there's so much history there, so many memories there. And so much of my ego has been wrapped up in that. And it's been incredibly hard for me to get over that. But man, through this podcast, I have had an, an opportunity to practice, to practice, to practice, to practice. And what has been so incredible and so amazing is that I have received so much feedback on the episodes when I talk about my struggles in that area. Because it's something that I think we all go through. You know, especially with family, man. Those relationships with family, those, those are some of the most challenging because there's so much intertwined in there, right? Those relationships tend to go back years, years and years and years. And, you know, stuff happens when we're young that we hold on to. And so those can be just, those can be the tough ones. But whew, our relationships are our mirrors. If that is something that, still challenges you, that concept is still challenging to grasp and understand, you know, what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to do a little Google search and see if somebody else has explained it in a more succinct or maybe in a different way that you could possibly connect with. And I'll link to it in the show notes on this episode because I'll do that because I think it's such, it's so important to understand. Once you understand that your relationships in life are mirrors, it, 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 it really, once again, it's like it's paradigm shifting. It's paradigm shifting. You know, like I just get I get excited now. I do 
thinking about, okay, when I experience somebody and, and something within them just excites me, gets me pumped up and amped up, it's because I see that in myself, right? You know, and like that's, that's a cool feeling to have. But then now having this new context, on the flip side, when something else happens and I get frustrated or even infuriated at something that another person does, I, I can recognize that that's my smaller self. That's that smaller Matthew. That's that egoic Matthew, right? That's the one who's trying to lead with his head instead of his heart. And it just gives me an opportunity to be like, okay, cool, cool. I see that. Awesome. I get it. I get it. I have some work to do. I have some meditating to do. Maybe I can create a little more clarity or understanding around why that button is there. And it's really also just created this appreciation for people in my life because people come into your life for a reason. They're there for a reason. If, they, if there was not a reason, they would not be there. So pay attention to, to the emotions that another person brings out of you, the emotions that bubble up when you experience them. Because oftentimes, especially with those emotions that you don't love, it's an opportunity for you to heal and to grow. So if you have someone in your life who's challenging you, they're pushing you and you're feeling resistance, you're feeling defensiveness, they're there for a reason. You summoned them. You asked for that mirror for a reason. And you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity. And once that thing within you that is feeling challenged, that's feeling defensive, once that thing is addressed, that person, the way they show up, shifts. And if it's not shifting, keep looking inward. Keep looking inward. Have the courage and the patience to continue looking inward because your relationship is a mirror. And that is just a... Ah, that's a, it's an awesome thing. It really is. It's like accessing a superpower within yourself. You're like, oh, dang, this new level of understanding. That's what all this stuff is. Anything that I've experienced in my life that has shifted my paradigm, like totally shifted how I view the world, the lens through which I look, it's like you, you, you gain access to a whole new suite of superpowers. I'm like, oh, man, cool. Now I could wear this on and I could look at it this way. It's, I don't know, to me, that stuff is exciting. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. So, that's number three. Our relationships are mirrors. So, that means we've got one more left. One more left. Let's recap real quick. The first big lesson, the first big takeaway, that the, that the secret to health is healing. It is detoxing quicker than we intox. The second huge takeaway from recording 100 episodes is that success in life is about how you experience the journey. It's about who you become in the process. It's not about what you obtain. The third huge lesson, the third big takeaway is that our relationships are our mirrors. Oof. Our relationships are our mirrors. And the fourth and final major takeaway from me, I talk about this, I think, since the very, very beginning of the show. And it's this, it's this duality 
it's this back and forth, this choice that we get to make every single day, moment to moment, choice between love and choice between fear. And that making a habit of stepping into situations that make you uncomfortable or that you're afraid of, making that a habit is one of the healthiest practices you can have in life. And that's because all the things you want to experience in your life are on the other side of fear. That's where the sweetest parts of life lie. And I say that from experience. I say that from having looked at the scariest, scariest moments of my life just in the past couple of years, choosing to stand there and look at them, the things that have made me most uncomfortable and walked through, stepped right into them and doing it again and again and again and again and experiencing what happens when you do that, when you step into something that makes you so uncomfortable that you, you just want to shake and every fiber is telling you to go the opposite direction, walking into something that makes you so scared that your underarms are sweating and your mind is racing a thousand miles a minute coming up with every freaking excuse in the book for you to turn around and not go through with it. But when you can quiet those things, when you can remind yourself why you're doing it in the first place, when you can connect with your bigger why, with your bigger purpose, when you can connect with your mission statement in life and walk through it anyway, that feeling, that feeling that you get is, is indescribable. For those of you who've done it, you know what I'm talking about. You access a part of yourself that you you have always just dreamed about. That's the best way to put it. You, know, you access a level of, of power within yourself that your mind may not have known was there, but your spirit knew it. And that's why your spirit was attracted to that circumstance. That's why your spirit was attracted to that thing that made you feel uncomfortable in the first place. And one of the things that I like to remind myself and I like to remind people when they, when they come to me with a situation or scenario in which they're scared or fearful, I like to remind them that, you know what? If you're listening to my voice right now, if you're breathing today, if you're here on earth, then you've made it through every single challenging situation that you've ever experienced in life. You've made it through all the ones that you never thought you could, you've made it through. You have a pattern of making it through your challenges, of not just surviving them, but then thriving. And you don't even have to be an active participant in, in, the, in the process of learning and growing from that lesson. Simply going through it, simply going through that situation, like your body is going to take something from it. Your body is going to become stronger. And I'm talking about on across all the levels, emotionally, spiritually, all that stuff. You become stronger. You become more powerful as you step through those uncomfortable moments. It just happens. You know, and you're here. You're in this place. You're listening to this podcast you're, you're, you're interested in these types of things and you're having these conversations in your mind and you're you know, willing to step into growth and healing and, and, and be a person who's about transformation because of the hardships you've had in your life, because of those situations that have made you feel uncomfortable, because of those things that are challenging, not in spite of them. And that's a big thing to remember too. All those things that you may have felt were put upon you, those things that you feel like you didn't choose, however you want to relate to them. In my opinion, I think we choose everything, all choices. But however you want to relate to those things, they are all part of your story. They're all part of your experience. And I go back to the fact that you're here. You're still here. All of those challenging things, you're still here. 
And so I think when we can wrap our minds around that, we realize that we are stronger and more capable than we truly give ourselves credit. And, you know, I, I think that goes across the board. And then once we can kind of understand that, right, even if you don't believe it, you just tell yourself that, like, hey, listen, I'm stronger and I'm more capable than I believe. Then you've got a little teeny, a little teeny thing to bring with you in the next time you step into one of those uncomfortable situations. The next time you're presented with something that makes you feel scared, you've got that little reminder. Hey, I've made it through everything in the past. Hey, I'm stronger. I'm more capable than I think. And as you continue to step into those challenging situations, as you continue to look at your fears and say, I acknowledge you, I'm moving anyway. I see you're there. I'm still moving forward. As you make that a habit, as you just continue to rep that as they come up, you just, you elevate. And it elevates everything in your life. It's really, it's really amazing how you can have an experience in one area of your life. Let's say in a relationship, you know, let's say that you, what, maybe, maybe you're a person who, like me, put a lot of weight on what it meant to be in a relationship and and you know i'll just i'll speak from my own personal experience i put so much weight and meaning behind what being a man meant what being a husband meant i put a lot of 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 a lot of the conversation in my mind was around possession there's a lot of scarcity there there's a lot of fear there and as I confronted those things, it just opened me up in so many amazing ways so that when I was now presented with a, a work circumstance that made me feel a little fearful or nervous or uncomfortable, I thought to myself, wait a minute, I stepped into the most challenging personal relationship thing ever that I could ever wrap my mind around. Like that's, you know, that for me was the biggest fear I had in my, in all of my life. I stepped into that and I thrived. I didn't just survive it, you know, I freaking thrived. I felt alive. And now you're telling me I'm a little nervous about some, some work stuff. Are you kidding me? Like it has this really amazing ability to just lift everything up. You're just like, well, you know what? Can't touch this. (laughs) <laughs> you go MC Hammer on her, but you're like, you can't touch this because I've stepped into my fears. I'm okay with feeling uncomfortable. I'm telling you. I've used the term superhero and superpowers a few times in this, in this episode, but that right there, that junk is straight up Marvel superpower. That's like the ability to fly. You know? That, that, that confidence, that power, that sense of being able to rely on yourself, you know, trust yourself, be at peace with circumstances as they flow. Like that, all that stuff that comes from stepping into your fears and stepping into those things that are uncomfortable, like you just walk through the rest of of life and the rest of experiences like, I got this. And you know what? The next time that something comes up and and it makes you feel afraid and anxious, like, it's okay. It's okay to feel that way. You know, I think your body responds that way, your soul and your spirit responds that way because it's important to you. If it wasn't important, you wouldn't feel that way. But because it's something that's important to you, boom, it triggers those things. And it's like, all right, another opportunity. Another opportunity for me to grow. Another opportunity for me to heal. Another opportunity for me to elevate. And that, my friends, is the fourth big, big takeaway I've had from recording and sharing across 100 episodes of the Having It All podcast. Whew. So if we were to do a real quick, quick recap, the number one is the secret to health is in healing. Number two is that success in life is about how you experience the journey and about who you become in the process. Number three is that relationships are our mirrors. 
And number four is that making a habit of stepping into situations that make you uncomfortable or fearful is one of the healthiest practices you can have. And that is what I got from 100 episodes. Now, Sarah told me that it would be a great idea for me to reference the episodes that best, I guess, uh, encapsulate the lesson. However, that was kind of hard for me to do, so I didn't do it. But um, I'll do my best in the show notes to go back and, and drop in links to episodes that I think do a good job of capturing these sentiments. Um, there's a hundred of them, so it's kind of challenging for me to do. But, um, whew, wow, I'm still feeling a little tingly. Maybe it's because I've been standing, but just recording 100 episodes of the show and, and getting to this point is a very humbling thing. It's a very exciting thing. You know, it's kind of like, all right, I'm going to climb this mountain. Boom, I'm at the top of this mountain. So what's next? And this show is continuing, by the way. We're not stopping at 100. We, we're going ahead. We're going ahead full steam. And one of the things that I was thinking about on, on uh, putting this episode together was actually something Sarah asked me. She said, how has the concept of having it all evolved for me? I thought that was a great question. Because I think that it has my idea of what having it all is, it stayed the same. You know, like this show started with the framework of abundant loving life. It it, it began on the premise that having it all is not about what we have at all. About it, it's about how we experience everything. It's about how we relate to ourselves how we relate to other people, and how we relate to life. And that hasn't changed. That really hasn't changed. I think what has evolved for me is this idea that once you get it, you get it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing now that it is an ongoing practice. It's a, it's a path. It's a journey. It's a process. There really, I don't think there really is a point where you get it. I think you're always just sort of reminding yourself, ah, oh, okay, yeah. It's not about that. It's about this. It's not about what's out there. It's about what's in here. You know, and that to me is something that has evolved a, a little bit since the beginning. And You know, perhaps that's because it's been only 18 months and maybe I need to give it more time, but for some of that stuff really, really sinks in. But I think that there is no finish line for healing and for for growth and for transformation. I think that we can constantly elevate our level of consciousness, constantly elevate our level of understanding about ourselves, about other people, and about life. I don't think that ends. And so maybe at one point I did think that you can get to more of a solid state and just be there and chill out. But now I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing and believing that it's just, it's constantly, constantly goes. And it evolves too. Like that in and of itself evolves. My understanding of, of what it means to heal evolves. And so that's what's very cool. It creates this opportunity for this, this whole thing to just keep on moving, keep on churning. So the show in and of itself has also changed. And you know what's kind of what's kind of cool is I gave myself 100 episodes to almost find my footing in a lot of ways as well. I thought, you know, after 100 episodes, I'll know the type of show that I want to produce. Whether it's going to be an interview show, whether it's going to be a, a bunch of quick 5 to 10 minute episodes, whether it's more, you know, longer monologues where I'm just talking about things, whether I'm going to script the show or I'm going to go totally off the cuff. Like I, I, I gave myself a hundred episodes to figure that stuff out. And you know what? <laughs> it's still, I'm still figuring that out, honestly. Uh, but now I'm, I am incorporating more conversations with people. Um, I, I, I published a conversation I had um, just a couple of episodes ago and I'm liking that because I, you know, I like the idea of riffing back and forth with people. So you're probably hearing more of those on the show. And honestly, I'm open for feedback. I'd love to hear what you all enjoyed. You know, I've done 
long format interviews where I've talked to people and I've done tons of research for for the interviews. And you know, my goal was for my the interview uh, guest to to feel like this was the best interview that they've ever had. And I asked some really really uh, awesome questions that were indicative of a lot of research. And then I've done shows where I recorded them in five minutes and, you know, before I'm heading out or maybe sometimes recorded in the car or I've recorded on my way walking places. And I've done episodes where I've scripted everything and episodes where I've gone totally off the top of my head. And so I would love to hear from you what you liked, what you enjoyed. And you can send all that feedback to my email address, mattcbivens at gmail.com. Um, and you can also go to my website and just fill out the form and drop me a note. Just tell me what you want. Tell me what you enjoyed, and uh, I'll produce more of those. And um, I, I want to end this episode by saying thank you. Saying thank you to you for listening and for you going on this journey with me. Um, I want to give a very, very special kind of just really heartfelt thank you to all of the listener feedback I've received on the show. All of the emails, man, your emails are just incredible, incredible. And they've taught me so much, taught me so much about the power of sharing and the power and importance of being vulnerable. You know, I I wouldn't have had the ability to connect with folks the way that I have had I personally not been okay with being vulnerable and being authentic and just being myself, being transparent. And it really, you know, reading your feedback and for the folks who I've met in person, being able to have those conversations with you, like it just, it really taught me that, taught me that, you know, the power of sharing and the power of vulnerability. So thank you for that. You know, for the people who, it was a challenge to reach out to me and, and, you put yourself on the line by being vulnerable in your outreach, being vulnerable in your email. I said, thank you for being the example. That stuff inspires me. You know, and for everyone who's taken a moment out of their lives to extend yourself to me in any sort of way, whether it's a review, whether it's an email, whether it's a, a, a like on a Facebook post or something, all of that, I am so humbled and so grateful. And and I want to give you just the biggest, biggest thanks from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate it. It yeah, I log it. Like that that stuff just fuels me. So I can't really put it into words, but thank you. Thank you. So here's to another 100 episodes of the podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens. Here's to you having it all. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.